Welcome back to the Motor Bench Development Suite video series. In this video, I'm going to discuss the custom board support feature in Motor Bench Development Suite version 2.5. I'll go over some recommended steps to implement the custom board support feature. So first, I'm going to open MCC. It may take a few moments. Shut off my output window. I have the MCC window open here. Now, since we have opened an existing project and we've already generated code, I can go ahead and click on the project resource. And under libraries, I can start MotorBench Development Suite. I'm going to double click on that. Go ahead and relocate my windows up here. And so now we're here in the easy setup screen. And I can go down to the board section. And I have my board selections here in the window. So to get started, I have a couple of options. I can open up an editor like VS Code, which I've done here. I can open a starter file. which will be called starter board under the motor bench release collateral folder. So I can go ahead and open that. And then this represents a starter file that I can use to enter in data for my custom board. I can give my board an ID and I can give it a display name. So in this case, we called it custom board or it comes pre-configured as the display name of custom board, but you can name it anything that you want. And then you can set the specific characteristics of the board. And you've got a lot of options for the peripherals, voltages, and other parameters. Now for some guidance on how to set the values, we can go back into the MCAF. So I'll just reopen that document again by going to the motor bench page. And I'll scroll down to motor control application framework users guide, go into version 8.01 or the latest version. And then I can go to section 6.6 .6 here where it talks about custom board support. And I can click on that and I can go to any one of the different sections here to give me guidance on how to set the values inside of the starter board file. Once I've set all the values, I can go ahead and save the file in VS Code, I can jump back to the MPLAB X IDE, and then I can click on import a board, and we're going to go ahead and overwrite the existing custom board configuration. And then I can go back into the motor bench release collateral master folder that has the starter board, and I can select starter board. 
and I can click open. And once I do that, it may take a few minutes for that board to load. It's actually still loading, so you can see you can see the progress here. You can see that the custom board option is selected. And then the board name that we allocated in the file as custom board will show up here along with the characteristics and the peripherals. Now another way that I can do this is I can select one of the existing microchip boards. So I can select the DSPIC 33CK LVMC, which is a pre-configured board. I'll go ahead and load that one. And that'll take a few moments. So if I look under characteristics, I see that I have the DSPIC 33CK LVMC loaded. You can see the board name right here. And then I can go ahead and export that board. I'll create another board file here on my desktop. I'll call it custom LVMC, just for demonstration purposes. I'll go ahead and save it. And then I can hop back into VS Code and I can open the file. Here's the custom LVMC that we just exported. And then it'll open there. And I can go into characteristics. Under display name, I can call it TSPIC. 33CK LVMC custom, just so that we know it's a custom board. And then I can go ahead and change any of the values for this board. So for instance, the DC link full scale current, if I wanted to, I could change it to 45, just for demonstration purposes. Go ahead and click on the Save button there. Close the file. Go back to the Import Board option. Click on the Desktop. And then select that custom LVMC that we just updated. You can see that it's loading. Could take a few minutes. You can see a, a little bit of a status here. And then also the status window uh, pops up to let you know that it's loading. And then we can see that the custom board is loaded. We click on characteristics. You can also open the identification and we can see that the board name of DSPIC 33CK LVMC Custom shows up. I can expand the current tab. And then the full scale is the 45 that we had just changed in the, in the file. What I could also do is I could also create a custom motor file. And I can modify the identification, the nameplate parameters, and also the electrical and mechanical parameters. So what MotorBench Development Suite gives me the capability to do if I want is if I have a custom motor, I can self-commission that motor using the self-commissioning feature, and I can measure the values that I need to use I can also update the nameplate values if necessary. For instance, the rated current, the rated voltage, the nominal and maximum speed, and the number of pole pairs, which are parameters that you can get from the data sheet. And then identification names can be changed directly here in the interface. So say if I wanted to change this value to five, and then instead of calling it 
an ID of Hearst 300. I can call it my motor if I wanted to. I can click on the export motor button. And then in the desktop, I can call this custom motor. It'll save as an XML file. Click on save. I'll go ahead and select the original Hearst motor that was uh, defined. And then if I want to import that motor file that we just created, I can click on the custom motor file that we just created. And then the rating for the continuous current and the ID of that motor subsequently updates. OK, now you're ready to use MotorBench Development Suite to create your motor control applications. Subscribe to our channel and don't miss any updates on this exciting video series.